And I tweeted, I said, when the FDIC finally approves banks to hold Bitcoin on their balance sheet, everybody will want to buy it. Nobody will want to sell it. And you won't be able to afford it. Bitcoin's the best performing institutional grade asset of the year to date. It's up 344%. And that's, adult, that's an acceleration of 2x over its growth rate for the past decade, which was also the most impressive performance. So I kind of, as an aeronautical engineer, this is like going through the speed of sound. If we went any faster, we'd rip the wings off the airplane. Like there, there, if you have any experience with a boat or an airplane or an airfoil, there's a certain speed you can get to at which point you just start to rip the wings off or, or you start to, to move against the forces of nature. And I think if I said to, you know, you're, you're saying to me, well, we're disappointed. You're up 340% in 12 months. Okay, so, yeah, so, so it's, loving yeah. that, right? I, I get what you're saying. Uh, okay, all right, all right. We're disappointed yeah. that there aren't a hundred. We're disappointed that Apple computer hadn't bought $50 billion of Bitcoin. Yes. yes. Right? Uh, That's what we're disappointed about. Yes, and yes. so yes. let's talk about that. I think, I think first of all, a lot, a lot of people, publicly traded companies have a problem owning, holding the property. And the problem holding the property is either A, there's, uh, it would take about a year, six months to a year to establish a relationship with a, a crypto custodian. When you go to set up your Coinbase account or a Fidelity account or whatever, if you're publicly traded, you're, you've got armies of lawyers and accountants going through due diligence and compliance check and, and security check and, and the like. I mean, bear in mind, most of these companies, most people that trade stocks, have been using the same broker for 20 years. You know, some most institutions have been using the same broker for 30 years. So having to actually come up with a new broker, a once in 30 year thing, I think that slows people down. I think the second thing is the FASB accounting treatment of indefinite and tangible, it's hostile and prejudicial to a CFO or a CEO that has a optically pristine P&L or balance sheet. <clears throat> you know, if, if I buy a billion of Bitcoin, it goes down by 50%, then it goes up by 20. I report to the world that I have 500 million in assets and I had a $500 million operating loss. Even though neither of those things are true, what I really have is 10 billion in assets and a $9 billion investment gain. So I got to sympathize. I mean, the one intelligent pushback from someone as to why I don't buy Bitcoin it's not the volatility of the asset, it's the optical or the accounting volatility because 30 years of pristine operations at a company with a perfect P&L and a perfect balance sheet and gross margins that you can predict plus or minus 1% for eight quarters, that gets totally blown out of the water if you replace your treasuries with Bitcoin. So I, I think that, um, that that's a drag for public entities that are gap accounting reliant. And I think the third drag is, is that there are, there are trillions of dollars, Brett, that by charter and by law, and maybe by tax code, can't own property, they have to own security, right? The distinction being a billion dollars of Bitcoin in an ETF or a billion dollars of MicroStrategy stock as a security, a billion dollars of a Bitcoin miner is a security, a billion dollars of Bitcoin is property. Now, I mean, there's a lot of advantages to owning property outright versus the security, but the disadvantage is if I raise $10 billion from 100 pension funds and I'm an SEC 40 act investment company and 90% of my portfolio has to be in securities, undoing that would take three years and Herculean effort, right? And maybe I lose my investors. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. So, I think that uh, one of the impediments uh, has been the lack of securities that offer Bitcoin exposure. I mean, the obvious elephant in the room is the lack of a Bitcoin ETF for the spot market. I don't know, you might have seen Tom Emmer's uh, note to the SEC today, where he basically says, we need we need an ETF for the spot. That would be a security. Um, if if bear, Keeping in mind one more observation, if I look at my ticker right now, Marathon 
is trading at $64 a share. It's a six and a half billion dollar market cap. And today it traded a billion dollars of liquidity. Riot today traded 600 million liquidity with a market cap north of 3 billion. And then you've got in rapid succession, you've got Bit Farms, which is a billion dollar plus publicly traded miner. You've got Hut 8, that stock has tripled in the past three months. It's a two and a half billion dollar miner. Bit Digital, I could go on. There's about 12, Hive, Argo. I think that, that if you say, well, what's the progress in 12 months? Well, when MicroStrategy did our due diligence, you know, Brett, I couldn't find a single company holding $3 million of Bitcoin on their balance sheet anywhere in the public markets. Couldn't find anybody. And so today we have like 36 companies and you've got MicroStrategy and Tesla that have taken north of billion dollar positions. You've got you've got Square and Marathon that have purchased, you know, four or five hundred million dollars worth of Bitcoin on their treasury. You've got a dozen Bitcoin miners. You've got two futures ETFs. And um, how would I how would I uh, put this to bed? I would say this, Brett, like you remember the chair of the FDIC last week said they're investigating how banks can hold Bitcoin on their balance sheet and what the reserve ratio should be. And uh, I looked at it and I tweeted, I said, when the FDIC finally approves banks to hold Bitcoin on their balance sheet, everybody will want to buy it. Nobody will want to sell it and you won't be able to afford it. So in this particular case, I think the same holds true, which is you're seeing the motion, you're seeing the 350% uh, up, uptick. You have a lot of obvious liabilities that are holding back Apple and Google and Facebook from buying 50 billion each. I thank my lucky stars for those liabilities. When I was banging away on a computer buying Bitcoin as fast as I could at, ni at $9,500 a coin, and I bought $175 million worth of it in like two days, hoping to hell no one figured out I was buying it. While I was doing that, I consoled myself with the thought that it took me three months to get KYC'd and get the account and they put me through hell. And if it's that difficult to be able to buy Bitcoin, then I figured that I'd done the work and everybody else was gonna come after me and they were gonna pay double or triple. And a year later, it still takes 12, you know, eight weeks to get a KYC AML account to do institutional grade Bitcoin acquisition as property. And you pay 6X that much or 7X that much. When, uh, when FASB cures the accounting, and I think there's consensus that we'll eventually go to fair market accounting. I just don't know when. When the SEC gives you a spot ETF, when FDIC lets banks hold Bitcoin on their balance sheet, right? At that point, you won't have these headaches, but you will be paying $500,000 a coin or a million dollars a coin. And so I don't, be careful what you wish for. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well-established exchanges, but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. 
And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof. To the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.